What a morning, but you know what? There's more to come because we're back with our series, Everyday Greatness, to help inspire you to make positive changes and get what you want out of life. You know I teamed up with our contributor, Robin Arzon. I know I could this for this. <laughs> and this morning we're going to focus on taking the leap, making that big change in your life, something that fashion designer Tori Birch did when she found her billion dollar brand. Wow. From runway to every day, designer Tori Birch has built a multi-billion dollar fashion empire. Named by Time 100 as one of the most influential people of 2024, her blockbuster business now spanning 370 stores worldwide. Hello, how are you? After all these years, I will say I've never been more excited than right now. I'm wear testing it, checking out the color. Do you like the color? And it all began with a dream to empower women and make a difference. I love Tori Birch, she's the best. I think it's important that people can dream big and know that if I can do it, they can absolutely do it. Driven by purpose, passion, and a hefty dose of style, Tori encourages others to design and edit their lives. I often talk to people about taking a job and maybe it's not the right job but being present enough to take things from that job that really help you take yourself into the future. Tori started her career in a variety of fashion industry roles before taking time off to be a stay-at-home mom. At the age of 37, she took a bet on herself, launching her own company in 2004. You can reinvent yourself and be who you want to be and determine your outcome. And with risk comes opportunity and challenge, which Tori says she's learned to embrace. I always think about grace under pressure. It's really important in life when things are going to happen, which we know they will, that you take things in stride. And I think it's important to breathe before you react. Take a beat, and then she shares, strategize your next move. Pick apart a problem and compartmentalize and then solve each element of the problem one at a time. And I think when you break it down, it doesn't feel so overwhelming. I mean, she exudes grace. That's she not Robin. She does. But you have been here all week with us and just really sharing some, some tips. We talked about mindset. We talked about increasing productivity, purpose. You know, people say, yes, yes, yes. But then they're like, oh, how do I, how do, I do this? And you say there are three questions you should ask. We have three things today that we should focus on when trying to identify our purpose. Okay. First thing, seek out new experiences. Put yourself in novel environments, even if it's just introducing to your, yourself to mm. somebody who may become a friend, you're going to reveal to yourself strengths that maybe you didn't know you had. Second thing, pay attention to what you're already interested in. Mine your curiosities for what your potential next passion project may be. Mm. And number three, anchor in community. You can ask your loved ones to reflect back what your strengths are. Ask a loved one what they find is, is, is embodies everyday yeah. greatness in you. I know, and it, it's funny because sometimes people can really see something that you don't even see in yourself. Okay, this is where you get to the questions because you've made the pivot. Yes. You were, I mean, you were a lawyer, you know, and then you made the pivot into the field that you're in and doing and, and killing it. When people are thinking about and they're so intimidated about it, this is where you say there's some three questions you should ask. Yes, the three questions. The first one, why not me? We see greatness mm -hmm. in others and we think, oh, but they can do that. That's, that's for them. Why not you? Why not you yeah. to achieve that thing or more? The second, what is my why? Ground yourself in purpose, which is the topic of today. Mm -hmm. And number three, this is my favorite personally, what decision would I make if I were twice as strong and twice as confident? And let's drill into number three for a second. Number three is asking you to befriend your future self. So if we're mm -hmm. trying to become stronger, more confident, more intentional, more purposeful, we're bridging the gap between where you are today and where you want to be in a year, six months, yeah. three months, and you're borrowing from tomorrow's bravery. And we're all stronger than we know. You know, we just tap into it and we realize we have that strength there. Tori, I mean, her story about how, you know, it, thankfully she was able to stay at home with her children. Not everybody has yes. an opportunity to do that, but she did. She was able to take, uh, you know, a, a breath and just really 
then examine what it is that she wanted to do, especially for caregivers. It's it's intimidating. It's intimidating to 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 want more and to make that pivot. How do you encourage folks? Gosh, I, I mean, I really want caregivers to know that they deserve the love that they give to yes. others. But the three tips, the three mm -hmm. things for caregivers, assess where you are. Meet yourself where you are. Take stock of your physical health, your mental health, your financial health, and really be where your feet are. The second, ask for help. That actually demonstrates mm. an incredible amount of bravery and strength. Your community is there, but they won't know how to help you in your, unless you're specific. So tell them about your dreams. Proclaim loudly what is it that you want for yourself and ask for them to help you. You talk about dream, you, got, you talk about a dreamscape. Yes. Dreamscape, what yes. is that? Well, a dreamscape is a mental depiction of where you want to see yourself in a year. That can be on a vision board or in a journal, mm -hmm. like we've discussed earlier this week. But it really is asking yourself the question, how good can it get? And what if it ends up better than I could possibly imagine? I want folks to paint with every color in their, on their paintbrush, because <laughs> nobody's going to do the dreaming for us. So I want folks to really feel armed with the toolkit to do that. And paint outside the lines. Yeah, that's right. You know, and I, I want folks to know more about you, because delays are not denials. You didn't talk about this earlier, but I want to. You were working on your book. I remember I was talking to you. You were working on your book, and you were also trying to get an athletic line going, and it was just too much, and you're like, ah. But, so you put that on hold, but what's happening now? Oh, yes. So, listen, you, you, blessings won't be blocked. I do believe in the divine timing of things. Um, I was working on an athletic line back when I was working on my first book. I was spread too thin. Mm -hmm. And coming out in 2025, I'll have an athleisure collaboration with Peloton, with my designs in the collection, and I couldn't be more proud and grateful. Delays are not denials. That's right. Delays are not denials. And no denying you. Thank you, Robin Arzon. Thank you for being part of this series. I really hope that we have really given people tools for their toolkits. And we have more on everyday greatness and more on Tori Birch's tools for success on goodmorningamerica.com. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. All right.